Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 29th, 2017. I'd like to thank Tom H. and Joseph L. for the following links for the TDD Report. And the links and the accreditation will be down in the description below. So you can actually check out any of these articles on your own. First up from KETV7, Adobe pulls the plug on Flash, what that means for your computer. What that means to me is hopefully a lot less Firefox crashes. It seems like hardly an hour goes by on Firefox that you do not have some kind of Adobe Flash player crash. I still do like Firefox for all the plugins I can use, but Adobe Flash is quite nonsense. It's the end of an era in the tech world. Adobe announced Tuesday that their Flash software, which has powered much of media content found online since its launch in 1996 will be phased out. The tech company says it will stop updating and distributing Flash Player by the end of 2020. Sites that use Flash will begin asking your permission to run the program. That will continue until the end of 2020. The phase-out timeline will be consistent with Adobe's tech partners including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla. Adobe will remain committed to industries that use Flash Player throughout 2020. Uh, regular security checks will be maintained, and starting in 2019, Windows will begin disabling Flash by default on its Microsoft Edge and Internet Explorer browsers. Okay, Cat, you're going to have to move. Next up, also from KETV, Wisconsin's firm set to become first in U.S. to microchip employees. I don't know if they're actually the very first. I think other firms probably have done something like this before. What they're doing is they're asking their employees. Uh, this is, by the way, the company is Three Square Market, a vending machine business. They're going to ask their employees to uh, voluntarily submit to a, a, a microchip, uh, just a tiny like grain of rice or something like that, between their thumb and their forefinger in their hand. Um, they're not going to be forced to do it. They're just those that want to do it. And basically, it's going to help them uh, be able to open and close doors, unlock doors, and also buy product from the vending machines. Um, they kind of expand. It's just a minute and a half. I, I'm not going to really play part of the video. If it was a longer video, I'd play part of it, but I'll probably get copyright um, dinged for it on YouTube because it is such a short video. It's only um, one minute, 27 seconds, but basically the video just talks about the, the fact in the future they could be uh, using these kind of chips for their vending machines for the, the public. They're making one version of the vending machine that has a thumbprint reader, which to me seems a little more realistic than asking other people to get these chips implanted in their hand just to use a vending machine. But they also have, uh, they've had for, you know, years and years and years the thing of holding up your phone to it and making your purchase on your vending machines. I mean, that's quite common in Europe and in Asia and places like that. So I don't know why we've lagged so far behind in the U.S. with technology like that. But yeah, uh, using your thumb printer if you wish to, you know, register your thumbprint with them or using your phone to make purchases. So I don't really see the need for this, but, you know, who knows. And this is from foxnews.com. Astronaut habitat for Mars missions could be made from recycled space shuttle parts. This is from uh, Lockheed Martin, too. NASA is giving Lockheed Martin the permission to go where no company has gone before, to deep space using recycled material. As part of its next step program, NASA will allow Lockheed Martin to use repurposed pieces of space shuttle for the habitat that could be used on Mars missions. First, the company will build full-scale prototypes and then start testing the technology at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. In addition to using recycled material from the container space shuttles, it will also rely on virtual and augmented reality to design the prototype. It's easy to take things for granted when you're living at home, but the recently selected astronauts will face unique challenges, said Bill Pratt, Lockheed Martin Next Step Program Manager in a press release. So evidently there's some astronauts uh, setting up to do this trial mission to Mars which I think we should do quite a few of those before we do actually send people to Mars. I think that's a good idea. Something as simple as calling your family is completely different when you're outside of low Earth orbit. While building this habitat, we had to operate in a different mindset that's more akin to long trips to Mars, so to ensure we keep them safe, healthy, and productive. Yeah, also you have the option, too, if something does go catastrophically wrong, you can rescue them right away, which you won't have that option when people actually go to Mars. And last up, this is the uh, one by Joseph Allen. I'll just give you the link to it. It's a video um, done by a, a, a YouTuber called, uh, or YouTube's uh, channel called SciShow. It's really good. I would encourage you, if you're into uh, science and technology and stuff like that, just to subscribe to the channel SciShow. But I'll give you the link to one where uh, it talks about slime mold, a brainless blob that seems smart. So 
the host of the science show, I believe his name is uh, Michael, I think it is. Let me check on the thing here and see. Uh, host name is Michael Aranda, is the host of SciShow, but really good articles. Uh, this talks about the fact that because uh, slime mold is single-celled uh, creatures and sometimes they do come together to form colonies, they can actually act like a uh, living human brain in some ways. I mean, obviously not as sophisticated as a human brain, but they can actually do things that neurons normally would be able to do, although they don't actually have any neurons. So uh, Michael explains the science behind these uh, clever, and he calls them eukaryotes. If I can even pronounce this, I should know more than, more than that uh, if I remember my biology. Eukaryotes, I think. Eukaryotes, yeah, yeah eukaryotes, I guess that's the other scientific name for a uh, slime mold. Not that I can pronounce it correctly. But anyway, thanks everybody for joining me for this week's TDD report, and I will catch you next week.